Today, I have a compilation for you. 10 of your favorite tips and tricks for macOS. Control Alt Delete can be a lifesaver on Windows. Is there a similar combination for Mac in case your apps stop responding? Yes, there is. You need to press three buttons on your Apple keyboard. Simply press Command plus Option, the button next to it, and also Escape, top left corner. You need to press them at the same time. Let's test it out. Command, Option, Escape. I just press it and it's pop up this little window and I can see all of the open apps. If there's the app that is not responding, simply click Force Quit. And you will also see the little note not responding next to that app, so it's easy to identify the one that's causing you troubles. So I'm going to Force Quit, this image preview. You need to confirm that action. And it's gone. You can also turn this on from the Apple menu at the top. So if you can still use your mouse, you can simply head to this little Apple logo and there's force quit option here. If you click on that, you got the very same panel. You may also want to explore one additional option. If you're still able to use your mouse, Simply head to Launchpad and type Activity. You will see this Activity Monitor app on your Mac. Turn this on and from here you will have a similar experience to what Command Alt Delete will do on Windows computer when you can see your CPU performance your memory, energy consumption, the disk, and network. So you can identify which app is taking most of your CPU or RAM, and then you can select that app, and you can quit that app by pressing this button at the top, Stop. If you quit the app, you still may have a chance to save your work, but the app must be responsive. If the app is already non responding, you will need to quick force quit and you may lose some progress in that app. Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can turn on your Bluetooth on your Mac without using a mouse. On your laptop, it's pretty easy because we still got the touchpad. On your laptop so you can move your cursor head all the way up here and you see that the Bluetooth is off you can turn it on by clicking this on off button but the real problem starts on iMac so the computer without the touch input if we switch off the Bluetooth by mistake we cannot connect to our magic mouse and we cannot use the mouse to turn on back the Bluetooth so what can we do the best way is to simply press F4 on your keyboard. And by the way, if you also use the Bluetooth keyboard, you can plug that in using the lightning cable. So the keyboard can be plugged in, and in that case, you don't even need a Bluetooth to operate keyboard. So that's the good news. You cannot do the same with the mouse because they put the plug-in port below the mouse, so we cannot use the mouse while plug in. But we can plug in the keyboard and then with the keyboard plug in, simply press F4. In this spotlight search, start typing Bluetooth. You will see a first option here Bluetooth File Exchange. Press Return to turn it on. This program will automatically detect that your Bluetooth is right now off and suggest you to turn on your Bluetooth. So press enter, press return again. And here it is. That's how you can turn on your Bluetooth without using mouse. It can be a lifesaver if you are iMac user. Hey there, today I'm going to show you how you can copy and paste your files on Mac. 
So if you've got a file you want to make a duplicate of, you can click on it first with your mouse. After it's highlighted, you will see that the name is with like the highlight color. Then you can use the keyboard shortcut combination for copy and paste. You may know that on Windows it's Ctrl C and then Ctrl V, but on Mac we use Command button. So press Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. As you can see, the copy just appear here next to it. We can also right click on the file and there's option to duplicate it. So you can do it without using any keyboard shortcuts as well. That's the fastest way of creating copies of your existing files in your system. Let me show you how you can split your screen into two windows in the iPad way. So if you click on the window, then at the top left corner, we got those three different colors. So there's red for closing the window, there's yellow to bring the window down to the dog, and there's also the full screen one, the green one. So hover your mouse on the green one, and you will see multiple options. So there's a full screen, of course, but you can also stick this window to the left, stick it to the right, and if you plug in the external monitor, you will also see it here. In my case, I will stick this window to the left and that will create the split for me. Now, on the right side, I can select which window should be sticked to the right side. In my case, I got only one to choose from. I click on it and we just split the screen into two sides. It's similar to iPad, so you can move this middle point to the left or to the right slightly if you want the one window to be more dominant. I think it's a really nice productivity boost. If you want to go out of that, it's really easy. So we go back here to the top and we can replace windows. So we don't need to go out if you want to just switch one window. So I can replace this window. Or I can replace that one here on the right side as well. So if you go to the right, you get same options. You can move window to the desktop or to the full screen as well. I do it this way. So we are back in the desktop mode when I can see my desktop and the other window is out now. So that's how you can split your screen on Mac. It's very similar to the iPad way. I hope this short tutorial was helpful. Hey guys. By default, macOS is set up into natural scrolling mode. So you kind of scrolling down by moving up your wheel on your mouse or your fingers are on your touch pad. So if you're on the MacBook, just place two fingers and move them up to scroll down, then move them down to scroll up, kind of like counterweight. But it's maybe not intuitive if you've got a lot of experience with Windows or Chrome OS. So let's change that. You can actually customize it. So if you prefer to go back to the scrolling that you get used to, simply go for your settings, system settings, and then scroll all the way down until you can see trackpad settings on your Mac or mouse settings so go for trackpad and there are three options here point and click zoom and scroll more gestures so if you go for scroll here you can switch off this natural scrolling this will not only affect a touchpad it will also affect your mouse as well so from here you can now test it out now i'm scrolling down i'm going down instead of up so now it's the same direction as the scroll wheel. If you prefer that method, simply go to system settings and switch off natural scrolling. If you cannot find the setting, there's a search bar here in the settings as well, and you can type natural, and they will show you that that's option for trackpad. Click on that and it will be here where you can switch this off. Let me show you how to recover your files that you already delete on your Mac. So here on my desktop, I got this file. And if I'm going to delete that by right clicking and moving to the trash, 
move to trash. Seems like the file is gone. But actually, it's now in the trash bin for a certain period of time. It can be 2 weeks, 30 days, 2 months. It's all up to your system settings. So normally, for the time being, we can simply head down here to the trash bin. And you will see all of your files that you recently deleted. Just keep in mind, by default, you got some kind of time limit. So those files will be not forever here. They will eventually disappear from your system. So if you want this file back, you can simply right click on it and there's option to put back. This way it will jump to the original location. In my case, that was a desktop. So that's very handy because we don't need to like try to drag it out. It will be put back where it was before you delete it. From other hand, if you simply want to delete this file, you can drag and drop it into trash bin. And you feel like you don't need this file at all. Maybe it's large or sensitive information or just like really huge video file that you want to free the space on your computer. You don't need to wait 30 days until it's like delete itself. You can click empty over here or you just right click on your trash bin and select empty trash. They will ask you that you are sure because after you click that all files are gone. Empty trash and our file is done. So that's how you can recover your files from trash bin and how you can put them into trash bin in the first place and also clean up the trash bin because only after you empty the trash bin you will get your storage your space on your computer back how to right click on mac without a mouse so i'm assuming you got your macbook with the touchpad or you bought the accessory separately in that case we can use it to move our cursor around but if you try to click on the right side of it it will not go into the right click like on windows to do the right click, you will need to press with both fingers. So just try to click with two fingers at the same time. And that will do the right click for you. All right. So on Mac, you need to press with two fingers for the secondary click and one finger for the primary click. And that's it. Let's learn how to take a screenshot on Mac. You will have to press combination of three buttons. If you press Command, Shift and number 3 on your keyboard. You will take a screenshot of the entire screen. By default, your screenshot will be saved on your desktop. If you want to take a screenshot only of the portion of the screen, you can try to press Command, Shift and number 4. Then your mouse will turn into this kind of crosshair. Now you can use that to select only the area of your screen. So I click and drag this selection all around this area. And when I release my mouse button, I will take screenshot of that area. And again, it will be saved on my desktop. How to use DuckDuckGo on your Mac? Actually, there are three ways of doing that. The first way is to simply go to DuckDuckGo go.com or simply duck.com and then you can use this search box at the top to do some searches without being traced so it's not only about third-party companies gathering information about you and then show you like ads about that stuff so if you search for more information about some car model they will start advertising your cars and stuff like that it's not only about this but also nowadays the search engines try to uh, kind of make you more engaged. So if you search for some controversial topics, you may be able to find only information that align with your point of view. So you cannot kind of search for anything that you will disagree because they are afraid you will stop browsing. So you find articles that everything confirms what you think about this topic. And that's going to be really a dangerous stuff, especially if you try to do some serious research. All right. So to avoid tracking and being display some certain search results based on your history, you can use DuckDuckGo. They will try to mask your activities and give you the, like raw content, like the browser used to be in 90s. So you can do it right here. 
or if you plan to use this feature often you can set up uh, DuckDuckGo as your default search engine so even use uh, other browsers you can use this as the default search engine or you can move one step further and download the dedicated browser so let's try to do that download the browser all right now it's already downloading it start automatically for me all right after that's done we simply need to open this file and drag and drop tag that go into our application then it will appear in your apps you can simply open it up and they wanna ask you that do you want to open this is from internet yes we want to open this up it's not from app store it's from internet and here it is we got a browser with built-in search engine that will kind of prevent uh, other third party from tracking your searches so it's rather private you can keep it as your secondary browser or you can use it as the main one that's all up to you you can import stuff like your passwords and your bookmarks or no in my case i will keep it as my secondary browser i will still keep using my google chrome unfortunately but sometimes i need to search for stuff without google knowing my search history so i don't want them to show me some certain pages based on what i searched before and that's how i'm going to use this browser DuckDuckGo. all right so that's how you can do it on your mac it's really simple Today we are going to learn how to turn on secondary click on your mouse in macOS. By default, when you got a new Mac or maybe you are using the public Mac on the guest mode, the right click on your mouse will be disabled. We can only left click, but we can very quickly change that. So simply head to your settings. You should be able to see a settings icon here at the dock. System settings, open it up and then scroll all the way down you should be able to see mouse here at the very bottom from here simply switch this to a click on the right side by default your secondary click will be off on the magic mouse but you can easily turn it on by selecting from the left or right side i recommend the right side is more natural if you cannot see your mouse at all in settings that's gonna happen that's a common glitch head to bluetooth and you should be able to see your mouse from here then you can click on your mouse eye icon and from here you can go to settings so let's go to my current mouse i click here on the eye more information and then i can click mouse settings this will allow you to jump straight to settings even they are not display in the settings menu Keep in mind this secondary click section, simply click on that on the magic mouse by default it's off, but you can click on that off and change to click right side of the mouse and that will turn on the right click on any macOS device. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.